Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Collider Games Podcast. I am Joey Rasul. Today I am joined by Cobster and Dennis Woo! here. I nearly said what's Dorian up? for a split second. I, I had to. Like, I look just like him. You oh. know what it is? I've been watching so much of Dorian playing Beat Saber, mm. like being able to sing Gangnam Style while also You guys are obsessed Beat with that game. Yes. I've, not, I've not played it yet. But I wouldn't guys... know. I wouldn't know. You guys playing it and see invites. like all the all the videos on Instagram, IGTV. Yeah. All that stuff. No, I mean we've been loving it because it's a it's a game that we can play with, you know, like we got Roca and Perry in playing because you know they don't know much about video games, but they can appreciate Beat Saber. Yeah, Roca so, was there for the very first video game ever created. <laughs> oh, yes, he yeah, was. he was. Uh, yeah, and no, it, uh, he, it was sticks. In the dirt, sticks, sticks in the, the dirt, sticks, sticks and stones in the dirt. You had to slide the two sticks, so like, uh, and and a, there's a little rock that went back and forth. Yes. Instead of coins, That's how it leaves. works. Well, welcome to the Collider Games podcast, everybody. You know we are a, l- a little ways away from E3, but that doesn't stop uh, news coming out and uh, new things coming out in the gaming world. Um, Dennis, what has been on your radar uh, this whole time? Well, <laughs> because of the Fallout 76 announcement, I've been like watching all the, all the videos and then there's actually this documentary called The Making of Fallout 76 that this Already? Uh, wow. You, well, it's it's from this YouTube channel called No Clip. Okay. It's like Patreon funded and I guess they must have special access to to Bethesda because the 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 documentary is like it's a in-house production and they kind of go into to the stuff but but you know, we, you and me did a video before about whether or not people should be worried about it. And not that I'm worried, but the more details that I learn about Fallout 76, the more I realize, yes, this is not going to be the regular Fallout experience that you're going to have. There's no NPCs. There's no dialogue trees. That's that's crazy yeah. for, you know, and like there have been enough memes going around about like how your choices have lessened and lessened within Fallout. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, especially with New Vegas, you were able to use your skills to either like barter or convince someone or threaten someone or something like that based on your specials like where where you put all your stats and things like that and you know with fallout 4 it was pretty much yes no or sarcastic yes well i think the big issue not big issue but big i guess controversy and it didn't seem so big at the time but once they decided that they were going to have a voice much like how mass effect has a voice to their character you start to limit the dialogue options, right? Because before it was, you picked all text-written mm-hmm. choices. So that could be anything. And they could write as much, as much dialogue as they want because the, only the, the NPC would talk back to you. Now that you're adding a, a, a voice actor for the game, that person has to read every single line and it's right. just limited. Well, so one of the things that uh, that I really wanted to do because I someone posted it about... Uh, Fallout New Vegas was they had this uh, spec on how if you wanted to go through the wasteland playing uh, as Doctor Who, mm-hmm. it's like you put your perception up really high, <laughs> you don't put anything into strength, you find a suit and glasses as soon as possible, mm. and then you just run through the wasteland like not fighting but trying to like you know convince people that you were doing the right thing, mm. and and I was like that that is a great role play thing to put on this game. I'm going to try that with Halo uh, with uh, with Halo 4 with Fallout 4. Mm-hmm. And so you know like when Fallout 4 came out, I was in the character creator like trying to make it look like David Tennant and then I got into the game and I was like, "Oh, oh, I can't actually do this in this no. game. Like it doesn't work." No, no. You get your ass kicked really fast. Yeah, and it just like just mechanically, you know, you have someone else's voice, yes. you know, the whole time and you know like why does David Tennant not have a British <laughs> accent? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, th- I mean, honestly, it kind of flies in the face of what they've been saying, where they're going to make the the world in Fallout seventy six is going to be larger, four times larger than Fallout four. Yeah, l- larger, I think, in the sense of, of the, map. the map, the scale of it, and so people can wander around. And it's actually necessary now that you realize you're not going to have those kind of dialogue trees or those type of missions. It's going to be more like questing, like Destiny or. World of Warcraft or something yeah. like that. Mm. So I guess I mean, but but what, like, what do you put in that world then? Like, what do you put in that space if it's not going to be things to converse with? It's just going to be different types of mutants and different yeah. types. <sighs> I think so. And looting. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I mean right? Y- uh, it's just going to turn into Monster Hunter, isn't it? 
Like, yeah. I have no idea what this is going to look like because it seems like I'm it's still, going... Like, look, look, I'm still looking forward to it very much. It's just going to be a yeah. different experience. It is definitely going to be uh, play with their friends, not yeah. by yourself. That's well, sad. That's so one of the sad. things one of the things that popped up on my radar uh, this week, uh, it actually just dropped on, uh, on Thursday, was the new hero for Overwatch, which is a uh, hamster in a ball. Oh, nice. Because that's, you know, the, the big thing that we've all been asking for in that game is, gosh, we need more hamsters. Yeah. Um, and I have not been thrilled with, I don't think any of the heroes that they've added to Overwatch, mm. none of them were like, yeah, yeah, that's what we needed. Orisa is <laughs> fine. Mora is fine. Mm -hmm. Bridget's fine. But this hamster in a ball, especially design-wise, this feels like something that did not need to happen um, and when you look at when uh, this, when Overwatch originally came out, there were games like uh, Battleborn mm -hmm. and Paladins, I believe, uh, that, that looked like carbon copies. Mm. And the one thing that those games had that Overwatch didn't was they had some tiny thing driving a, like a giant mech suit. Oh, okay. And it was like, yeah. okay, well, that, that seems like a cheesy thing, you know. It, no one, no one said. Well, I'm glad Blizzard doesn't have that, but you know, it, it was something that made those things stand out, and now they do, and it looks. I mean, it's it's very close to the penguin in a mech suit that's in Battleborn. So okay, all right. Well, it's a hamster though. I mean, it's a granted. Yeah. Granted, penguins are cooler than than hamsters, but you know, maybe they just wanted their own version. Now, did this just come out or like tease or so like they, trailer for it? They did the tease uh, like Wednesday saying they were going to have a new hero. Got it. Um, and then Thursday they revealed what the new hero was going to be. Okay. Um, so, you know, we've seen just a, like a touch of gameplay a little bit, you know, yeah. not really sure how uh, it's going to play. Um, there's going to be some PTR footage soon. Okay. But, uh, but for the most part, just design wise, I'm not excited. Yeah. You're going to get it. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, it's all free. It's all, it's all in free. the game. You like, try it out. You never know. You what if you end up like it? What if this hamster in a ball ends up being your favorite hero? He I mean, the playability could could be there, but uh, you know. I had a hamster once. They're great. They can get into tiny little places. <laughs> they can yeah, sneak in. He, he could be like a, a, a siege character in this um uh, Yeah. No, I, I mean, it could work pretty well. Copster, yes. what have you been uh playing recently? Uh I've been uh reliving Resident Evil. Uh, I don't think there's ever going to be a podcast where I don't mention Resident Evil, just as a fair <laughs> warning to everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, because we uh, of everything Resident Evil 2, I've been uh, working on a special video for you for, for Collider Games with Resident Evil 2, and it very much got me like, oh, God, like just reading up on all the lore. I'm like, God, I love all this stuff so much. So I went back to zero just to sort of prep myself. I don't need you don't like need literally to, back to zero, like yeah, Resident like Evil Zero, Resident Evil Zero. Uh, and you don't need to play any of these games to play. I'm doing this for in preparation for Resident Evil 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I did find out, though, about that game. If we're talking about news, I did find out that they uh, they are having a deluxe edition. I mean, they always do. But the one that they they had announced um, is for some pretty cool like skin uh, um, packages as well as like uh, you get deluxe weapons like you get a Samurai Edge which is like a famous Desert Eagle in, in sure. that series for Chris and Jill models uh, you also get different costumes like uh, like a Noir uh, Leon a Military Claire this one's really cool you get an El uh, Elza Walker for a lot of people who don't know uh, there was Resident Evil 1.5 so the history of Resident Evil 2 uh, they went about like 80 to like 90% fully done with the game and then uh, the original creator came in and was like, nah, can we try something else? Because they were making it a lot more action orientated. Yeah. And uh, he didn't like that because he wanted to keep that horror vibe there. So they scrapped everything, started over, and that's the Resident Evil 2 that we have today. And in that, the original character wasn't Claire Redfield. It was Elza, uh, Elza Walker. And so now in uh, for this version, if you get the the deluxe edition, you get her her skin. Like it was a okay. different kind of. She wore like a like a motorcycle uh, jumpsuit sort of thing, as opposed to what Claire wears, like her short shorts so, and red suit. So that gameplay, that that storyline, mm -hmm. um, has never been released, or no, it's like, been released before. People, yeah? I think people have like gotten emulators. Uh, oh, and piece it, it together. And piece it, piece it together. Yeah, but the story, I, it's more or less the same thing, with the exception of just like your character interactions. You're with other characters more often than others, and uh, the environments look slightly different. But it's still cool when you see it 
being played like online. I'm like, oh, I wish we would have kind of wish we would have gotten that. But yeah, uh, so that was kind of like that's been on my radar, just replaying those. But sure enough, uh, as I'm playing this, they they announced just uh, as we're recording this right before they're announcing a Halo TV series for that's Showtime. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, great. Now we really want to play Halo. Now we want to <laughs> play all the damn Halo games. So uh, I'm in a I'm in a sticky situation here. Yeah, well, we were talking about, you know, uh, video games being adapted to movies and TV last time, and yeah. Halo was one of the things that we, we talked about. We said, hey, you know, like, because they've been talking about doing this since 2014. Right, right. Um, so it's it's not like we went out and predicted this, uh, that this news was going to drop, or did we? Um, Ooh, but super. but honestly, a Halo TV series that's going to be 10 episodes on Showtime. Yep. Um, it's got Amblin involved. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got, um, what's his name from, uh, Planet of the Apes? Rupert White. Rupert White. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, I'm, I'm nervous about it, but, but it, if they don't show me an image of Master Chief, then I'm okay. Yeah. I I just don't want to see Master Chief in, in the, the promo, uh, art. I don't want to see him in the first trailer. I don't want this to be a story about Master Chief. It, John does not need to be in the, the world is big enough mm-hmm. that he does not need to be in there. There's so much stuff going on in the world. You could have a better story without him in the first season. Right. And I, I you'd brought this up. We did a collider news video for it. Uh, you brought up reach and I think that would be a perfect way to start it. Yeah. Uh, especially if, if I think they need to find their groove first before they jump into like the main story of them getting on yeah. the first Halo and being stranded there. Because I think there is a story to tell there. I think you can have, you can create a brand new character and have Master Chief there. Like he can come on the rate, like you hear him on the radio sort of thing. Like it'd be cool. Like let's say, for example, they do start it off uh, from the very first game. Mm-hmm. Then have it have it had to do with some random uh soldier on the halo yeah who probably doesn't make it out during uh, depending on how that you know how that game turns out yeah because uh, we all know what happens with there but uh it'd be cool like him or her on another section of halo and you're finding out all these other things through the game it, that's if they like make the game somewhat yeah. canon i also think that's like an interesting story as opposed to just yeah master chief's the main character like you're really thrown into because that way if they do do it like that then maybe eventually they can have john come in well, as a bigger role actually you know what it could also be before the spartan program because the uh, if i've got the uh chronology right the war starts before the spartan program starts okay yeah uh or at least before the successful spartan uh, right. successful part of the Spartan program if, if starts. If they tackle like, the experimenting on Yeah, and it, well, you start just following the first interactions with the Covenant. You mm-hmm. start to follow, you know, the beginnings of the war, and then your, like, teaser side story, uh, smoke and mirror stuff is the the beginnings of the experiments that create the Spartans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, children being taken and things like that. Like if that's in the background, and and you know people who know Halo go, I know what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, then, you know, we that might put us in a more interesting position. I think. Yeah, yeah, because I don't, I don't need it to have all the characters that I love and know in no, the game. Because I, mean, I could just play the games and see them. You know, I could, I could see Sarge on in in the games. I could see Cortana yeah. in those games. You know. Yeah. Uh, would they be nice to see? Sure. I mean, they can be like. Nice little uh, supporting roles. Just they pop up here and there. Yeah. You know? and, and, you know, like we can have an AI similar to Cortana. We can have, you know, a like a Keith David type yeah, running right, right. <laughs> running the uh, Keith David could easily still play him. Yeah. No, a little absolutely. bit older, but, you know. Well, and I would love to see, you know, um, this is this is uh, I would always love to see Nathan Fillion doing sci-fi, mm-hmm. but you know he had such a prominent role in ODST, ODST yeah. and things like that. I would love to see him in the series in some way, yeah, because uh, he's also he's been tight with Bungie mm-hmm. uh, since then. And they're not know, working on this though. No, it's three four three this time around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I wonder uh, if those ties with the franchise, mm-hmm. um, you know, bring him back into uh, TV acting for Halo. Yeah, I'm interested to see how they're gonna pull off the effects. Are there gonna be brutes? Yeah, brutes would be terrifying to see in real life. How how the how the different covenant aliens? Are yeah, I was gonna look. say that that's that's one of the tough things. Is well, none budget of- wise though, Showtime 
they're saying this is going to be their most like expensive, ambitious mm-hmm. project they've ever done. Which is exciting. It is, Very but exciting. we haven't seen Showtime do that yet. We've mm-hmm. seen HBO do that yeah, right, with Game of, of Thrones. And mm-hmm. Showtime has been more, in, they have more of kind of the drama, the, the right. modern time drama. Well, you know. and, and this is one of the reasons that I'm thinking it might be a flood storyline. Just, just on sheer effect of the aliens that you have to run into. Like right. the Covenant are tough because uh, just the way they're built, the brutes are huge. Um, the um, the the oh, like the uh, blanking on all the other uh, aliens, uh, like the type of covenants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The like you you've got you've got the elites, but then grunts. you've also got the, grun- the yeah, grunts. The yeah, the little grunts. Um, like all those just physically to put on camera. Either you've got to do it like full CGI, and that's not going to look great, or you got to do suits, or you know, suits a would mixture, be more expensive. A mixture of yeah. both. I don't know. It's interesting, especially I, I like that it's a very ambitious thing and they're going to go for it. This could be yeah. their Game of Thrones. This could be their Westworld. You know, this could be yeah. like their their big thing that because I Showtime is very popular. But this one might be the one where like, oh, everyone they make they it's successful. Yeah. But I do think jumping straight to the flood is a little too like forward, maybe easier. Yeah. But I think I think you need to establish that relationship between humans and Covenant. And then, I, like, I, I almost don't want to see the flood right away. I would like if they show up later in the season, or or if not, it's second season. That's you know? uh, floods like the beginning of your act three of the end of the season kind of thing. Yeah, right. You know, right. like it's it's all the tension between humans and covenant and going back and a forth. Third thing, and yeah. then all of a sudden there's the there's the third thing that they have to deal with. Right, yeah, like right. that that could be interesting. I mean, that's kind of. To a certain extent, that's kind of the Halo Two Arbiter story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am also interested who, to see who the who else is going to direct besides River Wire. They said that he's just directing multiple episodes. Yeah, there's no way he can direct all no, ten. Right. No. So I, I'd like to see some other possible familiar faces going in there and directing some stuff. But I'm glad that someone like him, because I, I love the Rise of the Planet Apes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. like of someone of his caliber. Is and, that, and, that, and that's a good point that he has some experience with directing. Visual effects, a yeah, big, big budget, CGI armies yeah. of visual effects. You know, you know, you you combine grunts and brutes, and that's essentially you know Caesar's the, army. The Caesar's army. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, that is expensive. I think they're going to limit. Like, they're not going to go tackle like the Prometheans yet. You know what I mean? No. Like, they're not going to no, go that I don't far. Think, I don't think they'll go that far. I hope they don't even touch that stuff. I hope they just stick to the original. Three yeah. or or even before that, like you said, ODST and Reach. I mean, I would kind of be interested to see like you know the equivalent of like a Guilty Spark or something like that floating yeah, around. That'd be cool. Yeah, but th- th- that one's a lot easier. That's than, a lot. Yeah, a bunch there of are plenty of around. things that they can do without having to. You know, honestly, probably the storyline's going to be a little more uh, SWAT, a little more tactical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to keep the numbers low. I can see keep, that. You know, Jungle, like they, yeah. they they kind of go into real air because I think like the setting of Halo is could be fairly easy you get just you go to uh the mountains and a bunch of waterfalls and then you have a cg halo up in the distance right you just go to a box canyon in the middle of nowhere and then uh that's all you need they don't have to make it in space that much the first episode i feel like would be the most expensive if if they do like crash land from um the uh god i'm blanking on the the the, the name of the ship uh i'm thinking ishimura but that's uh, dead space um What's the name of the first ship the in the first, first Halo? Ship, um, God, what is it? No, I'm all I've got in my head is the Ford Unto Dawn, and that's not right. No, um, uh, but uh, yeah, can we, No, no. Okay, can we on. just you know one to one episodes of uh, Red versus Blue in real life? That would be fun. That's just the, that's the way to do it. I, they Pillar, throw Pillar of Autumn. Pillar of Autumn. Yeah, God, that's a great name. It's a great band name. It's a metal <laughs> band right there. Pillar of Autumn. They they always had such good like ship names. Oh like, yeah, all mm-hmm. all the human uh, cruisers and things like that had mm-hmm. great names. Um, but uh, honestly, you know, we were talking about this a little while ago with um, Halo and Destiny, mm-hmm. where Halo, I played Halo mostly for the multiplayer. Um, I still played through the stories. I still liked the stories. Yeah. But the stories were kind of like. Some something that you would get first, and then you you know now that you understand the mechanics and the controls, you can go in and play multiplayer. First. Right, right. Um, I think especially now at this point, now that the series, the story of the series hasn't been the best, I think a lot of people buy those games for mm-hmm. multiplayer. I mean, that's just kind of like a lot of things now. 
Yeah, no, honestly, we are... Um, it was a new Call of Duty game doesn't have a single player, right? Yeah, it's just straight up no, multiplayer. Well, so actually, it kind of does because it has single individual single player missions for each of the um, Maps? specialists. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. So you have uh, a, like a little mini story to kind of learn how each specialist works and maybe a bit of backstory on them. Um, but it doesn't have a full-fledged single player campaign experience. It still has those little mini missions which you could string together and make a campaign. It still has story within zombies and things like that. Mm. Uh, we actually have uh, an interview uh, with the senior producer coming out next week on Thursday um, that you guys can check out and and get a real deep dive into what is going on with Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Nice. Um, nice they they talk a lot about the fact that uh, you know Black Ops Three is so you know loved in the community mm -hmm. apart from you know some of the jetpack stuff and. Uh, all that, so it's tough to build on that and build a new game, and build a better game. Yeah, and they they talk about all the individual things that they've done to try and make it better. So it's a really interesting uh, listen uh, if you guys want to check it out. Sweet. Um, and we had one go up this week, um, which was an interview with the game director uh, for Destiny Two Forsaken, uh, which is the story that uh, kills off uh, Cade. Which Spoiler. I'm not spoiling anything because it's in the trailer. He like see, don't watch the trailers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, well, okay. Then for you, I'm sorry. I'm spoiling that. But it, damn you know, it, can't believe they killed Cade. They killed Cade Six. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's it's one of those things where you have you've had immortal heroes this whole time, mm. and they're trying to like put some stakes in it. Mm, um, I love steak. And and you know, it's it's an interesting thing because at first when they announced. Uh, Forsaken, I was really bitter about it because when you got the um, season pass, mm -hmm. when Destiny 2 came out, it came with expansions one and two okay. for free. Uh, that like That's what the season pass was. You were getting the first two expansions. Yeah. This is the third expansion, and the first one was okay. The second one was shit, mm. and then this is the third one. So... No one who bought the uh, season pass gets Forsaken for free. No. Um, and you have to have the two previous expansions to for, for Forsaken to work. So if you just bought the regular version of the game, you're going to have to buy um, Call of Osiris. You're going to have to buy uh, Warmind, mm -hmm. both of which aren't amazing yeah and then you're gonna have to buy forsaken so so the cost is just going up and up and up but hmm. but uh, obviously these things aren't necessary to buy correct they're not necessary to buy to play destiny 2 okay they are necessary to buy to play forsaken ah you have to have war mind Why have you have you to have forsaken me you uh, have I, 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 so you're pretty much paying for an unfinished game well yeah i mean you know what? It definitely had a lot more than Destiny One did. I mm -hmm. still, I still like Destiny Two. I still play it, um, and the to play Devil's Advocate for a bit. They are they delivered a game. Yeah. You know, you can argue about whether that was finished or not, but I had a good experience playing it. It was you know, mm -hmm. twelve fifteen hour uh, story, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's got multiplayer like nobody's business. Right, right. Um, and then, you know, you know all the raids and things like that. And then on top of that, they're doing DLC. You could argue that the, uh, the game on disc was not worth mm -hmm. what you paid, but you could argue that with any game, whether they release DLC or not. This is... Right. It's more about these days that they're releasing a platform mm -hmm. that they can put stuff into. Yeah. So uh, honestly, I'm... I would rather them release DLC for a game that I've already got a character specced up in and, you know, just release more story and more multiplayer stuff and more weapons and things like that than release a new game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. The, the whole DLC thing always is troubling to yeah. me. DLC should be, like, I mean, if you're really into the game and you want to buy, like, skins and extra weapons and stuff, that's fine. But it shouldn't, like, make 
let's say for like something like Destiny, oh, you get this DLC, you get better guns than most people who don't want to buy the DLC. And then it's just like, oh, that's just kind of a crappy advantage for those people. Yeah, right. Not everybody could afford I mean, every single DLC. Destiny's Destiny's pretty good about balancing their weapons in PvP. Mm, okay. Um, because it is uh, like an RPG system where you are leveling up and you know you're going up in light in uh, in your character and in mm-hmm. all your weapons and things like that. But then um, when you go into multiplayer, all that gets flatlined. Mm. So you can be you know light level fifty and playing against people who are light level four hundred um, because the cap the cap is uh, changing with Forsaken as well. Um, and still be on the same level. And if you had the same weapons mm. just at different levels, uh, they would become the exact same weapons in, okay. in the game. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that some of the weapons that come with the DLC aren't at their base level better okay. because they're being developed. They're, new things are being added, and you can kind of like... It's not so much about an individual item being better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are there are some rare items that are really good, but it's about if you get the DLCs, you have more options. You can customize more towards your play style. Like there are little things um, with all the um, uh, legendary, not legendary, like the exotic items mm-hmm. where they add functionality to the game. Like I, I have a, a helmet in... Uh, multiplayer that while you're scoped leaves your uh, mini map up. Oh, okay. And it's just just cool. a little change to the mechanics like that. But I can I can you know be sniping and know if someone's coming up behind me. Mm. Uh, mm. Whereas if you don't have that helmet on, you like your mini map will go away while you're scoped. Okay. Um, and so it's little things like that that yeah. if you're stacking enough of those kind of items, you're getting an advantage for sure. Right. But right. there are those items available in the vanilla game mm. you just might not be getting the type of item that works best for yeah. exactly how you want to play yeah I, I guess for me it's just it the the entire idea of the dlc is very much this company is taking advantage of these gamers a lot mm-hmm. of the time i think I, yeah it depends it, on what it is though yeah. right i mean what kind of content they're selling you right yeah like if it's like like when the first battlefront came out and and there was it, it was fine for you know for a while. Then it's just like oh okay, there's not a whole lot to do anymore. And like oh don't worry, we've got DLCs coming out. I'm like okay, so you tell me I have to pay more to to get more? Right. I mean, cause you're limiting me as is. I don't want to have to pay extra for this. Or or if like a game isn't finished. Or like I think the worst is I think this one was free. I think like the worst example was like Mass Effect Three. Right. When, everyone got just only three endings and then everyone started complaining and they're like, oh, don't worry, there's going to be a, the, a free there's, DLC there's, there's another ending, yeah. ending coming out. I'm like, okay, well, then why didn't you just have that in the beginning? Well, you know? and it's and it's one of those things that it does not reward early adopters at all because right. if you bought, uh, you know, sticking on Destiny, if you bought the game when it came out mm-hmm. with the um, expansion uh, bundle, you were paying somewhere between 80 and 100 bucks uh, and then that doesn't include Forsaken. Forsaken's going to be another $40. So you're in, you know, 120, 140 bucks. Whereas if you never picked up the game mm-hmm. and when Forsaken comes out, I assume they're going to do a bundle pack where yes. they sell the game uh, and the two expansions and Forsaken mm-hmm. all together, probably yeah. for somewhere between 60 to 80 um, something like that, or maybe up to 100. So you're going to be paying less if you waited, which, I mean, it's kind of true with anything, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. but you want to you wanna reward the early adopters. Like, any, like it would be amazing if, if a DLC came out and they said anyone who played on day one gets this for free. Yeah. Like, or, or anyone who was in our beta mm. gets mm-hmm. this for free. Like, that... Kind of retroactive reward system would be great. And there's, like, you know, talking about Overwatch, all those uh, things that they've added uh, are free. You know, they're not charging anyone for that kind of stuff, but it's more about keeping people in the ecosystem and they make their money off of loot boxes. Yeah. Uh, And the loot boxes are skins and, uh, you know, uh, 
things like that. There, you can get the loot boxes in game as you play, but if you want to buy more, you can totally buy um, different ones. And all the DLC of extra skins and stuff like that mm-hmm. is free, but you have to get them through loot boxes. Mm-hmm. So their economy comes from people really wanting all the collectibles and the the skins and paying for loot boxes. Doesn't affect the gameplay at all. Yeah. But, you know, their their system is designed for that because that's that's the thing that you pay for. Whereas with Destiny, they don't like they're not charging for skins or anything like that, mm-hmm. but they are charging for the DLC in which those new skins come. Right. So I guess you just have to like if you're just really into it, then then go for it. Like it, it, as long as it's just an option, as long as it never infe- affects the story or any kind of multiplayer where people have other advantages over other people, then mm-hmm. it's like then then that's fine. Like like I I got into Fallout pretty late. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got out, like, I got into it. Uh, if I've played Fallout 3, that's the only one I ever really played all the way through. And New Vegas, I played that all the way through. Yep. And I, I got the uh, Game of the Year edition, which, which came out. All the, all the DLCs, which is great. It's like, I have all that, so I don't have to pay in individually. And those are just things, those are just different side quests that you can yep. go yes. in different states and whatnot. I remember. But I mean, honestly, with, uh, with a lot of those, like, you can argue that that is part of the story and that should be part of you know you the, the, yeah. the game because for quite a few games some of the dlc storylines are just as good if not better than the original game you look mm-hmm. at like um bioshock infinite mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. have the whole burial at sea storyline which brought you back to rapture and you know was entire like a different look at the game different gameplay when you were playing as elizabeth People complain about the fact that Elizabeth didn't have anywhere near as much uh, ability um, as as you did in the regular game, but honestly, it played weirdly like uh, Arkham Asylum in that you had to be stealthy and sneaking up, and, and I just played it like Arkham Asylum, and I had a ton of fun playing it, mm, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of um, canon story that you don't get if you don't pay for that DLC. Yeah, um, it really depends on what it is. Fallout, on the other hand, is is one of the things you can't complain about, like not getting the value out of your, you know. Yeah, you're getting you, a lot already. You know, yeah. Fallout Three without the DLC, you, you it was sixty bucks when it came out. I played eighty to hundred hours on that game. Yeah, and I did pay. I you know since I bought it when it came out, I bought the DLC as they came mm-hmm. out. I think there was like, I think each DLC was about ten bucks or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Some were more worth it than others. So there's certain games. I remember uh, Point Lookout was like, a, it was a significant amount of gameplay. And then some of the other ones were just very, very short and weren't that great. Yeah. So it, you kind of have to judge it by then. But I don't think, at least in that situation, I don't feel ripped off at all. I feel ripped off when it is something where it sounds like they didn't finish the game. And then they like yeah. made a DLC that you have to pay for. Well, and then you know, for me, I always go back to the idea of uh, Borderlands. The original Borderlands um, mm. had uh, it was similar to Fallout in that it had a lot of the dialogue and stuff was um, was text based. Yeah, the only <laughs> the main difference was the NPCs were text based, so yeah. they talk back to you. I didn't feel feel involved in the world or immersed right. in the world like Fallout Three. Sure, your dialogue options were text. They talked back to you though. But the uh, but the DLC started to have more dialogue and you know flesh out the world mm-hmm. more and and start to be more interactive and more entertaining. And if you slogged through the regular game and you got to uh, you know uh, not not Moxies, but uh, but but after that, you know, revolution and stuff like that, you were getting a lot more story. You were getting a lot more character, and you got a uh, real insight into what uh, Borderlands Two was going to be, uh, and the amount of character that's in that game. Whereas if you just played the vanilla game, you're not excited about Borderlands Two because it's like, okay, that was a game that didn't have a lot. It had potential, but it didn't have a lot I in the world. I did not finish Borderlands One because yeah. I just didn't get into the storyline. Then I played multiplayer instead. You know. Yeah. So that I mean that that's that's the biggest thing. Like sometimes they uh, realize what's missing in the game, 
and they don't realize it while developing it. And mm. DLC gives them the opportunity to bring that in. And, you know, they've got to spend development dollars to make the DLC. So I understand charging in that sense. I don't think there are many places that are maliciously doing it and saying like, whoa, 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 stop adding so much to the game. We got to save some of that for DLC. Right. I mean, maybe EA is doing that. <laughs> it feels but, a little bit like that sometimes. But, it does. It but feels for like, most places. It feels like, like going to see a movie and then the movie sucks. And they're like, well, I... The, I this sucks, but the ultimate edition is going to be great. Like, no, you had your shot. You lost it. You, you're not going to get me a second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know? are you saying that uh, Warner Brothers uh, is Give me the, the is Justice the... League DLC. Give me that. Right. I need to see it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 basically, yeah, it's it's a pretty similar uh, landscape. Yeah. Um, the developer should know, though, because like something like Red Dead Redemption, when it came out, mm-hmm. the multiplayer was not finished. Mm. Right. The, the areas weren't finished, but they didn't charge you they just you had to wait like a week two weeks three weeks Mm -hmm. a month and they would deliver another open area well and then uh, with um with gta 5 that was the case as well like the 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 heist Mm -hmm. yeah the the online was like a week two weeks later but then the the (laughs) the, uh online heists came out so much later uh and i don't remember if they charged for that one that finally did come out but that was that was part of the original announcement i'm guessing it not cuz there so, would be yeah. an uproar that's same with the red dead like there would have been like people going well, they, nuts if they had charged for basically finishing the game yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. but gta 5 has had you know things where they are charging for you know extra you know they're charging for dlc that gives you new cars and new items and things like that and like that that always sure. feels shitty well, um, yeah. Especially with a game that has multiplayer, it's like you see someone with a cool jet, and it's like, oh, you you literally, literally and figuratively paid for that. You paid you know mm-hmm. twenty bucks for the opportunity to be able to buy that with in-game currency. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay, like Red Dead, then they charged for the zombies, but that was like di- a different. They did right. a whole different thing, and so like I felt like that was worth buying. It was more of an expensive, though, I think, DLC, if I remember when it Yeah, they, I mean, out. I thought they, like, completely released that as almost an entire new game. Didn't they release that in, like, a disc and everything, too? Yeah. They yeah. did, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think I think that was, it was a different time as far as um, remember the cost was, digital downloads and stuff like that. Because Red, Red Dead was a, a while back. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the cost was, like, close to, like, 30 yeah. if I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't, like, a 10, 20... Whatever, fifteen dollars. But digital downloads for DLC were were definitely around, but they weren't as prevalent. No, uh, they were all on disc. I bought the the Fallout uh, three DLCs on discs. On disc, Get yeah, that, kids. Yeah. It wasn't digital; it yeah. was physical. Yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, like more things are digital. Like almost every game has to be online in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, are you guys buy very discs least anymore? Update. Do you guys like buy the copy? Uh, if it's something big, like I, well, I mean, I would try to, but Fallout 76, they already sold out of the, the, uh, power helmet edition, which is $200, which comes with the disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally no, I'm like, I bought UFC three digital, um, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Certain things. Like it depends if it's just like, I just want to play the game and it's like, cool, whatever. I'll just. I might be Fate buying that Master Chief Collection at today. I, I just I want to play Halo. So <laughs> you want to play the God, yeah. I want to play Halo. The, so rem- the remastered. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Anniversary edition. Uh, things that I collect, I will buy the disc of. Yeah. Like when Uncharted Four came out, I wanted the version with the statue and everything like that. Um, but the other thing that I've, in a and it kind of cheats the system a little bit. Um, but um, I have uh, two Sweet. PS4s at home, mine and my wife's. Um, oh, and so you if there's, have oh, yeah, I know. That's yeah, the best. You, you got to catch separate that. setup. You got to catch that. That's lovely. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got an Xbox one and a PS4, both of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so occasionally we have, uh, games that we want to play multiplayer. Okay. Yeah. And so usually what we'll do is we'll buy one digitally first and see if we can game the system a little bit by buying it on her account, yeah. but on my PS4, mm, okay. so that it downloads to my PS4, and then she can still play it when she's away from the place that it was downloaded. Nice. Um, so, so I can still play it, and then she's got her main account on hers, so she can download it again there. And we can occasionally, like, there's occasional games that, that'll work, and we can play 
at the simultaneous simultaneously. Okay. So we got it to work with. Uh, this is this is a, a a cheap trick for anyone out there who wants to be, be able to play on multiple. Yeah, they make enough money. Yeah, ex- yeah. Um, and it's yeah, it only works for like true multiplayer stuff. Uh, if you want to play together, um, not many people need multiple copies of uh, games and things like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing that I we really got it to work with was uh, Dead by Daylight. Uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. the the 4v1 horror game, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because we played a, a big kind of LAN party with it where nice. we had four PS4s um, nice. playing Ult- as the, 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 the victims in one room and then one as the killer set up in another room. Um, that's cool. And, you know, it's like we're going to have to buy five copies of this game to make it happen. Or we can buy like two or three copies of this game to make it work by, you know, swapping throughout yeah, we, stick it to the man yeah we got it to work it it worked fine i don't rec- recommend it for every game because it doesn't always work um you know like for something like overwatch it doesn't work mm. um so yeah it it's uh it's a little bit of uh gaming the system mm-hmm. uh and it does not work you know cross uh cross platform cross platform at all um so if you like for you you have a ps4 and an xbox one yeah uh well i mean Almost nothing works cross platform PS4 and Xbox One now because Sony's being a jerk and uh, you won't damn, play Fortnite Sony. with everyone else. Can't make a good Spider Man. Can't even let us have Fortnite. I mean, they Gosh. might be making a good Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, I'm still excited about that. But yeah, no, Fortnite. Um, a video game, yes. Movies, no. Oh, yes. yes. Movies. Yes. Movies, no. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. no. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, that, was a, that was a fun little time uh, playing Fortnite with everybody. Very, very short. And yeah, then it and, went now away. He, and now you can't. Win away. Because you, you play Fortnite on PS4. Yes. Knapsack plays Fortnite on PS4. Cody yeah. plays Fortnite on PS4. PS4. I play it on PS4. Uh, uh, Frank plays on the Switch. Okay, yes. He and would. Dorian, uh, I'm not sure. I think Dorian plays on PS4. Okay. He or just he might be all on, the time. He might be on Xbox One. Okay. Um, I'm on Xbox One. You're yeah. on Xbox One. But I'm a noob. I, I, suck, at, I suck at Fortnite. Uh, I, I yeah, let everyone I, else build. Right. Oh yeah, stuff. I can't. I can't. I handle. can't build anything. I loved Minecraft, but this building, I can't. I can't get. Used like to when it. I get hit and I'm on the ground, the, uh, my teammates got to build the the fort build to the protect, walls up. Yeah. Yeah. protect me. I tried a uh, a little bit on um, on mobile. Oh, it's impossible. And impossible. like anything that I had learned about <laughs> about Fortnite just went to shit because the second yeah. someone shot me, I was like, Ugh, Ugh, what do I do? But how I great of threw my phone. How, how great of like a concept? But they they make a game. They're like, yeah, anyone that plays it, first of all, it's free, so anyone can play it. Yeah. If you as long as you have the system, and everyone can play together, like that's wonderful. Even if you're on the phone, you don't have like, and you want to just try it. That's well, great. And so, what what do you think the reasoning behind Sony not wanting to play? Money. With everyone else, Money. I guess, yeah. Money, yeah. yeah. They're number one. When you're number one, you have that that you know the power position to say, okay, well. But I mean, so there's um, we all we all know it's, you know, it's no secret that people playing on mobile in Fortnite are at a disadvantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could start to argue that maybe people playing on the Switch are at disadvantage. I could see Microsoft doing something where. People playing on PC and people playing on Xbox One, there's something that's leveling that out a little bit. Like mm-hmm. they're they're making the PC game a tiny bit handicapped to make the Xbox One a little more competitive. Are you talking about with the movement of the mouse, how fast the mouse yeah. moves compared or, to a or, controller? And I'm and I don't know specifically what they would do, but mm-hmm. I could see because Microsoft has a control over both of those landscapes them trying to close that gap, even if it's something subtle. Mm-hmm. What if they didn't want to offer that to Sony? You know, What if Sony knew that if they're playing in that landscape, they were going to be at a disadvantage to PC and to Xbox One? Yeah. Um, you know, because as much as this is, you know, uh, Epic Games world, uh, while Sony does have a market share of their own consoles... Microsoft has a decent amount of control when it comes to cross-platform because they have two two platforms. They mm-hmm. kind of have three because you know they've got a certain amount of phones as well. Well, I mean, I think in ge- general, Microsoft's philosophy is is because they no longer have a phone anymore. 
Oh, no, mm-hmm. they don't. You're right. Yeah, they don't have a phone anymore because I used to have a, a Windows phone. They are trying to get everything in every platform. So that, that means, like, I'm talking about from Microsoft Office. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they want it on iOS. They want it on Android. They want it on your PC. They want it on your tablet. Like, they want it on your iPad. And they're trying to do the same thing with games. So Minecraft, they bought Minecraft for how many billions of dollars? Right, right. I didn't realize why at the time. You know, I, I just wasn't Because you can in, do it yeah. anywhere. <laughs> yes, and so now it's on everything. You can play it on your... And, and it's, it's cross-platform. You can take your same, you know, account and play on different platforms. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where they're at. Uh, and they kind of want to do that with Fortnite as well. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, you know, since, yeah. since they're not number one, it's it's a lot easier to the, say. They're, they are not number one in the console space. Yes. They, are, they are growing very quickly, but yeah. they... In the gaming space, they have a lot more of a foothold than I think people realize. Yeah, with realize. The, with, I mean, no one plays games on their Mac, you know? Right, like exactly. People. Yeah, so they are, they do still have a lot of, uh, a lot of weight to throw around. Mm-hmm. And if, and if it, and if it came down to it, and like, this is, this is just, you know, theory, speculation, no idea whether this is true or not, but that, you know, they can throw around their weight uh, a little bit if they needed to mm-hmm. with uh, a company like Epic Games. Mm. Um, and it doesn't really bother me that like I play Fortnite, but I'm not like super crazy about it. No. I play it once in a while. The, I, like just when I heard the idea of cross platforming on that game, when my little brother was the one, because it's a very, it's very much a younger, even younger generation than you yeah. and me, Joey. That kids are kids like are playing this thing like crazy, and he's the one that told me about it. And he's in high school, and he. Uh, showed it to me. He's like, yeah, you can play it uh, a PS4, Xbox. This was before the Sony said no. Uh, the was, I'm like, what? You so I have PS4, you have Xbox, and we can play together. Yeah, that, that's a thing. That's that's a thing. And back in my day, yeah, no way, <laughs> back, no way, sir. Back in my day, we couldn't play online at all. So yeah, you know, I um, remember those days. No, I mean honestly, like it doesn't affect too much because you're right. PS4 does currently have the market share, so plenty of your friends hopefully have uh, PS4s anyway. So if you, like, you know, we just went through a list. Like, you, me, Cody, Ken, Dorian are all playing on PS4. Frank yeah. is considering buying a PS4. God, Frank. Um, <laughs> what are you doing, Frank? And, uh, you know, con- consoles are, uh, you know, because we we're in the pro uh, era of the PS4 Pro and yeah. the Xbox One X the uh, original consoles are dropping in price and things like that. And, and new ones Fortnite itself is free. Yeah. Um, so. But I mean, but look at this dynamic though. You guys are all have PlayStation, right? Yeah. Frank does not. He wants to play Fortnite with you. And if Sony limits it, so it's not cross platform, then he has to consider buying just to play. Uh, yeah. He has to yeah. play with you guys. And I think that's where Sony's at. We're like, okay, we have dominant market share. So this can help. Yeah, you, you can buy. use that to actually yes. sell consoles. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think there's enough of a retaliation uh, against them, and they have enough good games that are exclusives mm-hmm. um, that they can sell. They can still be selling consoles. And what we talked about last time uh, when we were talking about the fact that Xbox One is outselling PS4 two to one, part of that is because of a market saturation. You know. So many people that are gamers already have PS4s, mm-hmm. so less people are buying PS4s because people already have them. Mm-hmm. Um, and the system they don't have is the Xbox One. Yeah. So l- logically, the Xbox One is going to be outselling the PS4 because yeah. people are, you know, when they ini- initially bought the console, and, you know, maybe now they're in the space of buying a second console or something like that. The second console they're going to buy is the Xbox. A perfect example. Me, I yeah. bought it the. Xbox One uh, a few months ago, and it's like the first time where I am like, okay, now exclusive games for either or. I don't have to be like, oh, I can't play that. Of like, I have both of them. I'm fortunate enough to be able to play both of those, and that's really nice. You know, one of the only things that I regret about this console generation, uh, when it, you know, when Xbox One and PS4 were both announced and they were coming out, and you know, there was all the you know TV talk around uh, Xbox One. The I bought a uh, PS4 day one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I won mine in a rally or not a rally, a raffle. Oh, a raffle. Yeah, I did like a to, rally. Do you a rally, like a, yeah. yeah. I did a car racing rally. I did a yeah. marathon right before and I won it. No, yeah, I um, won it in a raffle, so I didn't even have to pay dirt for it. racing. When yeah. uh, when the Xbox One came out, mm-hmm. uh, th- all their day one editions on the controller, it actually like says day one. Mm-hmm. You know, like congratulations, you bought this day one. PS4, nothing. I was nothing. like, darn it. I, I, Oh, I like that little bit of collectability or, you know. Yeah. Well, that's the like Xbox One X. You can get the Scorpio edition. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. If you had pre, uh, pre-ordered, pre like... When it was what, called Scorpio? Yeah, like they have Scorpio editions. Interesting. I, I mean, I like, like some of the special edition... I, I've always liked special edition consoles. They're always cool. I don't... I don't want to collect them, but it's usually like if I'm going to buy a new console, like if I'm finally going to buy uh, an Xbox One, mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to get like a normal Xbox One. I would want one of the special editions or oh, something. Okay. Well, it's usually like a gamified version, right? Yeah. Like a yeah. Halo version yeah. of uh, yeah. Xbox Forza. Yeah. So you just got an Xbox One, right? Yeah. So Voice wh- correct. How, how much does this – do you use this and do you think that helped in your purchases – Xbox is backwards compatible. With, yes, which with is the, wonderful. Okay, so is that a was that deciding uh, that's, purchasing that w- decision where you're like, hey, I can play 360 games. Yep. I can play. Okay, that's interesting because that's one thing the PS PS4 Four doesn't does, really have. Oh doesn't but they, I mean, they have their digital marketplace where they're adding those games. Okay. Yeah, a lot of, um, they have a lot of PSNs on there. And, yeah, but is that uh, like to buy though? Some are to rent. It. I think it just depends because Some like for me, rent. it's. It, I can take my Xbox 360 game, like the disc, mm-hmm. and and put it in an Xbox One and yeah. play it. Yeah, 100. That was like the big deciding factor uh, because uh, the Gears Five got announced, and I wanted to play through all the Gears, and I did that. I did it in like freaking three weeks. I don't know Jeez. how I did it, but I did it. It's a lot of late nights, and I finally finished Gears of War Four, which I'd never finished before. So now I'm like, oh, cool, I'm all set, I'm ready to go, and then I'll replay them again as soon as uh, the Five comes out. Uh, but that that was definitely the big one because I I you know Dead Space is another franchise that I've been wanting to replay. I think they only have like Dead Space three on the PlayStation Network, which you can I think it's like a rentable thing, mm-hmm. so you don't have to pay anything. But I've like rented games; they don't play well. It, it's yeah. very dodgy. I guess it just depends on your internet, but it's just it's a little little tricky. But well, how does the PS four one work? When you rent it, you're it's playing off streaming, their cloud, it, yeah, it's streaming yeah. down. Uh, pretty much. So which it's, which, which to be fair, Microsoft and Xbox, they're saying that's going to be the future of their game when, Pass. When it's, when it's robust, then I believe it. Um, yeah. And there's some cool stuff coming with Game Pass. Like, there are a lot of day one releases that are going to be available on Game Pass. Um, mm-hmm. For me, backwards compatibility is not as big of a deal, especially because um, for the last couple console generations, I have jumped back and forth. Like, la- before PS4... I had an Xbox 360, mm-hmm. uh, and before that, I had a GameCube. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. know, I went Nintendo, Microsoft, and now Sony. Yeah. Um, and so I don't have, just personally, I don't have discs that I'm gonna put into another system because I don't have the next generation of that. But you said you had a 360, right? So if you bought a one, yeah, right now you could play those games. But I the other way that I could play those games is with my 360, which is still hooked up to my oh, TV. I'm too lazy for that shit. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm the a, same way. My yeah. 360 is like I still have it, but it's yeah. like off somewhere else. But that's else. but that's because you have an Xbox 1. Like yeah. I mean e- even even if even when I first got my Xbox 1 and they didn't have compatible games, I just I was like, "All right, here's my 360." Yeah. I'll I, in my mind I'm like, "I'll play it. I'll play it." But like yeah. it's hooked up it's much easier if the console itself, like like a PC, yeah. right, can can play all the games from before. For, for me, I would much rather have an HD re-release of whatever game from sure. the previous console. But like yeah. that's usually the spark that goes. Oh yeah, I do want to play. I do want to play that again because you know, like I've, you know, to go back to Borderlands, I you know my wife and I both thousand pointed. Uh, uh, well, I didn't thousand point Borderlands uh, one. She did. Uh, Ooh, sick burn. Yeah. Uh, and then when the uh, Handsome Collection came out mm-hmm. for PS4, we started playing the game from the beginning again. Yeah. Uh, and we probably wouldn't have on 360 because, you know, we played it and beat it on 360. But now like, when it came out again, we had, A, it came with all the DLC. Mm-hmm. B, we had, you know, a higher resolution screen and a higher resolution copy of the game um and see we had 
all these trophies that we now didn't have, right. you know, you know, or or achievements if you're playing on Xbox, like all of a sudden that completionist mentality kicks in and you're like, no, nah, I want to, I want to play through it and beat it mm. here now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So backwards compatibility is not that big of a deal for me, especially when things are getting re-released. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I cause I, they did, re, they did re do the first Gears of War, which is great. A, a whole new mm-hmm. rendering of graphics and stuff. And I'm like, watch, they're gonna they're gonna freaking do Gears of War two eventually. Even though that game still holds up pretty well. But like, yeah, I mean, let's get a let's get did they do did they ever do a Splinter Cell HD collection? I feel like they did. They did. Um it was not the most recent uh yeah. set. It was it was only like the first couple games. Mm, okay. Um Yeah, yeah. They've done Silent Hill, uh they've done uh, where's Dino Crisis? Anybody out there, Dino right. Crisis fans? They well, need to remake that. The game. one that Holy I want to go back and play, um, and and maybe I need an Xbox One because of backwards compatibility. I want to go back and play Beyond Good and Evil because mm-hmm. that was for the next one. That was an Xbox game, Xbox and PS2, and then they did an HD re-release on Xbox 360 and PS3, mm-hmm. and then that that has not been ported over to PS4 and Xbox One yet. Yeah. But if Xbox One is backwards compatible, then I can go to like a used game store, pick up the HD copy of uh, Beyond Good and Evil on Xbox 360, mm-hmm. and then play it on Xbox One. Or I could save all that money of buying a console and just play it on my 360, which is what it was natively designed to run on right. anyway. And you never know, they might come out with a, a re-release for that. Like yeah, in I mean, for in preparation one. for the new game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been actually looking into Beyond Good and Evil a lot because it was a cult game that came out and like, uh, mid two thousands, early two thousands, something like that. Um, and the new one, Beyond Good and Evil Two, a the the cinematic trailers look awesome. Mm-hmm. When the first cinematic trailer came out last year, we were told that the game was going to be a prequel, uh, and so it wasn't going to involve any of the characters uh, that we'd had in the first game, mm-hmm. uh, which was great because it's like, well, not enough people played the first game, so. You know, not enough people are going to remember that. And then in the E3 trailer that we got, we saw the main character from the first game right. show up. Oh. And it was like, okay, well, I guess it is going to be a, a sequel, and you guys straight up lied to us or tricked us or whatever. But now I really want to go figure out the story for the first one because it's a game I missed. Okay. And so I might go deep dive and uh, figure out exactly what uh, – what to expect from Beyond Good and Evil Two? Nice, that's always the best. You got to prepare for the. You got to prepare for yeah. games. I got. I, I got to play every list single. Got to play every uh, single Resident Evil Two game for the number two remake. Right, right. You have to do it. You have to. Do either of you guys uh, game on PC at all? No. A little bit, but you know, I don't. I mean, I'm Mac based, so okay. I n- nothing intensive. Mostly like Hearthstone and I stuff like that. I used to, and then because there were there used to be a bigger division, I think, between like PC games mm-hmm. and, and console. A games. lot of a lot of my friends, uh, they all PC. Yeah, yeah, and I just I just built my own PC, and mm-hmm. they all keep saying you got to play, you got to play. I'm like I. I did it for other reasons. Yeah, I, that's I did, that's the know. thing is I, I stopped playing on PCs because I was editing. I didn't want to right. do anything to affect my desktop computer. That for editing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know how editing is. Yeah, you know? it's, tem- oh, yeah. it's temperamental. It's, as yeah, it's, the it's worst. like the codex and the uh-huh. video card and like so any little building up. yeah anything driver related that's gonna pull resources or so mm-hmm. yeah I just completely stop pc gaming yeah i mean i'll i'll install small stuff um you know when uh steam Minesweeper. released uh hd collection of uh of uh age of empires mm-hmm. you know i downloaded like i bought like four copies of that because you could gift copies to people oh, right. and it was just like they 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 did it as a bundle like you could buy one license or you could buy four licenses and gift the other three mm-hmm. and i was just like here dad take this you know like because we used to play it all the time so uh, low impact games like that, I'll play on PC. Yeah, I, I bought a uh, Oxen Free. Have you played okay. that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought that, and the thing with the Xbox is like certain games you can you can buy that go on PC and Xbox. You pay once, and you can play on mm-hmm. either platform. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right. Well, I think it's about that time. Any last minute things that we want to hit on before we uh, we head out for the day, guys? Uh, 
Yeah, keep playing those video games. Yeah, you know, keep I've, playing. I've got a I've got a stack that I got to get back to. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the Collider Games podcast. This has been episode three with Copster and Dennis and myself, Joey Rasul. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Joey Rasul, R A double S double O L. Dennis, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram, Dennis.tzng. And Christian, what about you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Copster15. Check out my stuff. Thanks so much, guys. We'll catch you next time. Game over.